I uh, checked my Facebook today and I had a Facebook memory from one year ago today, um, which actually I believe is something we discussed uh, on the show a year ago, um, right around this time. But uh, for those uh, who do not remember exactly what was happening last February 22nd, which is the date as of us recording this, um, that was the day of the Nevada caucuses during the Democratic primaries um, for president. So at that time last year, Dave had been up knocking doors for Bernie and like helping the Bernie campaign try and get uh, last minute people into uh the well the caucus sites i almost said voting booths but i don't really do that in nevada and then uh uh myself i think another one of our friends elliot uh mm -hmm. who's been he on the show up. before he was up there as well and i came up that day to observe the caucuses um and that was such a joyous weekend it was a wild weekend especially because bernie slaughtered i mean he absolutely mm -hmm. dominated nevada um, and we were up in Reno, um, and after, you know, like we kind of, after we had done the, we had like observed the caucuses and like had lunch or whatever, it was like, well, let's go like watch the results and have some drinks. Uh, and it was an extremely fun evening because Bernie killed it and we were extremely happy about it. Um, and there's a, there's a, a picture, I'll, you know, I'll just throw this out on the voices thing, but there's a, there's a picture of the three of us that we got a bartender to take of us where we're all like smiling at the camera and it is, and that's like, was, was what my memory was of on Facebook or whatever. It's and it's three like, weeks before everything. Yes. I know. The world <laughs> shut down. Yeah. And it's it was a week and a half before, like, before the cratered when all right. the, all the right. mods uh, teamed up together against him. Mm -hmm. So when that was like, our moment. Yep. Our yeah. little sweet moment. Um, right. Skylar, do you remember the night before when we were at a bar, this really dingy bar, and we ended up playing pool against this guy? Yeah, and his name was like Cupcake or like Napkin or something like that. He had some wild ass <laughs> name and was being like extremely hostile. Yeah. Not with a name like Cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know when it's like the guy that's so tough that like the name is like facetious, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I was like, Cupcake was giving you a hard time. Wow. And he was like really good at pool. And then like I had the final game with him. And for some reason I was really on. And do you remember we convinced him that if if I won, he would have to go caucus for Bernie the next yeah. day? And you won. And I won. Uh, who was he gonna? He wasn't gonna caucus for Bernie. He wasn't, he wasn't going gonna to? caucus at all. This, he no, caucus. this dude. This is not cupcake like a caucus not a man kind who of caucuses. guy. Yeah, right. cupcake was not a big caucus guy. Uh, <laughs> typically, <laughs> no. Yeah, I do remember that. And did I did he do it. Oh, I don't know. We have no idea. Uh, I sincerely uh, doubt that Cupcake made his way to like instas, his yeah. local caucus site. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't sure if that was how the story was going to like go like he, you know. And what then... if we did exchange Instagrams and he had like this beautiful little bakery? Like it turned <laughs> out. And he was just having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. Um, um, cupcake if you're out there listening um you know thanks for nothing man <laughs> bernie lost and it's kind of your fault <laughs> the way i'm looking at you. it <laughs> oh, cupcake couldn't do anything about super tuesday that was that was just gonna happen um no so the reason i bring this up and i think i actually have mentioned this on the show before but this is kind of like i kind of didn't really i've never really thought about it before but this picture has sort of taken um like a little extra meaning for me now. Cause it is like, it is literally less than a month before, like not only does the primary like, I mean, it just goes to hell, um, but then mm -hmm. COVID happens, you know? Yeah. And it's this picture of like these three guys who are on this like so victorious happy. high of like having like, it, like, like in the original post on Facebook, I'm like, Bernie Sanders is the next president of the United States of America, good night. <laughs> you know, like the universe was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was like hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it, it like in that, like that picture, like for me, 
like does it represents like there like that Skyler in that picture like thinks that like this country is actually on track to like do something really good and like unprecedented and like oh my god like change is, is actually going to happen like this thing is really going to go on and like that guy only lasted like 48 hours <laughs> like that that's that's Skyler <laughs> that's Skyler I don't even think I had time to recover from the hangover I got that night before like the world was just like before Super eh, Tuesday no, no no we're not doing that at all uh, I feel like I, this episode needs to be in like memoriam that's Skyler <laughs> it is the Skyler that like thought that we actually had like that we might take the off ramp right. uh, yeah. for, for who dared to dream for an instant <laughs> And then I, I think I do. I feel like maybe it was me that plunged the world into COVID nineteen with raisin my in the sun. That's all dried up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm totally convinced that it was me. I my friends bought me this like sound bowl, um, and I've been joking that you know I'm I'm not a super deep person, and so you can't give me things that deal with the supernatural because I first of all I called it a gong for like the first three months that I had it, and I would hit it wrong and all those kinds of things, and I was like. I think between that and the burning stick and the sage and all of that, I'm just not that person. And I really do think that I like cooked up some sort of spell that the ancestors <laughs> wanted that sent us into topsy turvy. So I, I, I'm not allowed to touch anything. I'm just gonna sit quiet, like like the ancestors say to do when the storm is coming, and just wait until it passes because I've caused enough damage already. But I don't think we'll this is you your fault, Skylar. I think this. I think this one's well, on me. Well, I mean, I I appreciate that. Uh, if we're gonna, if we're doing this and we're disclosing things, I also may have made a deal uh, with Satan over a card game that I wanted to win uh, about a week before COVID <laughs> happened. Oh my gosh. Uh, so, so I thanks mean, to both of you. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I and didn't. Look at, and here we are. Yeah, I didn't. I, he, he didn't. The price didn't seem that steep at the time, and there was like ten bucks on the line. You know, it never so. does. It yeah. never does. And then well, here, I, for me, I am. You, you, you two can keep doing like all of these things that jinx us forever, and I am like, <laughs> I am a socialist dory. I just like. Five minutes later, I'm just like, all right, what's the next fight? Like, yeah, let's let's do it. Just keep it's swimming, funny. right? Um, and so I I don't know. Like I wasn't that beat up over it, and I don't think it changed me much at all. Because you're, re you're resilient. You're res yeah, it is organizing exactly. That's yeah, that's what it is. Exactly. It's a it. bunch of little dories going after the big shark. Big, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Little fishes. Yep. Cue, cue, we cue, can never cue the convince analogy. We can never <laughs> convince the sharks that we're friends, not food. <laughs> That's it. This is true. I read together, that in Capital. We yeah. can. This sounds like an episode of a very cool podcast uh, that I would like to listen to. Uh, should we Same. record that podcast? Let's, yeah, let's start that. recording that. All right, let's, let's go. Do <laughs> Voices. The things they said. Voices. Some from those days. Oh. Hello, everyone. You have Kempa. And you have Skylar. No Shannon, but you have Flo. And we have a very special guest today in Kula Koenig, our dear friend. She is the founder of Social Justice Politicor, uh, a, a, just a classic rabble rouser uh, in our region that I, I think also you are the former president of Buapa, um, mm -hmm. And we can talk about that a little bit later, too. You have been um, just shaking things up around here for as long as I've been here, I feel like. So yep. I'm so happy to have you. Um, also, just mention, Shannon, um, we love you. Get some rest tonight. And we are expecting you back Thursday. But even if you don't, even if you don't come back, that's fine, too. Not with me, Shannon. Uh... <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. We're gonna have we're gonna have strong words. Uh, Someone's drawn the line. 
Uh, no, obviously I'm kidding. Um, take as much time as you need. We love you. And again, uh, listener homework is to tweet nice things at Shannon. Um, yes. As we go. Flo, that was a, that was a very nice tweet you did today for her. Beach. Love you, Shannon. Yeah. Even though you're a terrible HR director, we still love you. Mm-hmm. Nope, you're great. I don't you're know you, Shannon, that. but feel better. Now we have Flo as HR director, and I just feel like I'm walking on eggshells. Lame. Shannon, right. please come back. Yeah, yeah this is terrible. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> you said that like five times. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's how the show works. Uh, <laughs> let's talk yes. about you and all the cool work yes. you do. Um, let's just do a sort of a big picture. Uh, tell us sort of what is social justice politicor? What is the why of it? How you how did you create it? Uh, and feel free to tie in some of your uh, professional history into how this came to be what it is today. Um, Yeah, so the why of it really uh, was just getting tired of um, showing up at meetings and we're really loud, you know, we're thinking we're doing something and then there's like no follow through after that, we're not consistent. So specifically what happened was when I really got upset was when the, um, the inspector general was locked out by the sheriff. And so this I be remember, Sheriff Jones. yeah, so yes. Sheriff, yes. Sheriff Jones, Sheriff mm-hmm. Jones, Sheriff of Sacramento County locked out mm-hmm. the inspector general, uh, basically yeah. from doing his job and, and uh, doing any oversight in his offices. Keep going. Sorry. Right. Right. Yeah. And it was, and I actually was, um, I, I scheduled my uh, trip to Bali. And so I actually wasn't even, was trying to organize folks right before leaving to Bali and then trying to see if I could watch the hearing somehow from Bali, whatever. But when I heard my comrades were like, yes, there's so many people there. We packed it. We've got everybody there. You know, we're going to, and we're going to, you know, make sure that, you know, some stuff happens. And then there was like no follow through. Like Patrick Kennedy said he was going to do some stuff. Nothing happened. And then it just kind of like That's died a board down. Of supervisor, then, supervisor. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then kind of like, you know, it was just business as usual again. And at the same time, I'm also president of BOAPA, Black Women Organized for Political Action, the Sacramento chapter. And, you know, trying to get folks to like go to meetings, keep eyes on meetings to find out what is happening. Um, because it's just like, if we're not paying attention, they're just gonna keep doing it. And so I'd always had this idea of, of right, even I talked to Flo about it, like, you know, probably a year or two before I even did it. I was like, well, why don't we just like, why can't we just have a spreadsheet and people sign up to go to meetings, you know, and we can just share what's going on. Um, but it really wasn't until I was in a, a, a fellowship called the Rockwood Building Power Fellowship. Oh, was it last year? I can't even keep track anymore. It was. Like last... yeah, yeah, I can't even keep track anymore. Um, that, you know, I really, they really uh, help you step into your power and all the things that you want to do, but that you may be afraid of. And I realized like- What is the, uh, I'm sorry, what's the fellowship about? Yeah, so it, it's called, it's about building power. Um, and, but the whole idea is that you have to know yourself. You have to really like, it's super, um, God, everybody cried, cried so much. It's all about how you have to really be deeply reflective about who you are, um, how you lead, what are your own triggers? And just, you really have to do the work on yourself mm. to then find out, okay, what's my purpose, right? Because the idea is you can't be a good organizer if you are not self-aware, you know? And so that was a really, and they had to do exercises where you literally would get in front of folks and you would just talk about your dreams. And this is where it just, it just kept coming out where I was like this political core, this core of people who are really, uh, keeping an eye out on what's happening with elected officials. It's not just one person because people are getting burnt out, like activists are getting burnt out. Uh, and that was really one of the big things is just people are tired. And so how can we like spread the love? And so I always say many hands light work. Um, and so it was kind of in the back of my mind. And then when the, um, uh, in my fellowship, they do this thing called wise council, where you literally pitch your idea and then they kind of, they take it apart and they build it up. So they kind of help you. 
which is really wonderful also. Um, and you, it's so weird because you you don't get to look at them. So you turn around and they give you feedback. That way it's not awkward. I mean, it is awkward, but it's better that than still looking at people. pretty awkward to me, but. <laughs> it, well, it, it's actually better because sometimes when people are like kind of ripping all stuff apart, you're just like, ah. Uh. So people also feel like they could just be honest and help out. Anyways. So they, the, this process helped yeah. you come up with this? Yeah, it helped me. It really did. It's called Wise Council. And it helped me take an idea that I had in my head and really kind of like really flesh it out and you know asking me questions like well you know you're going to need to be connected to a lot of groups this is going to be this is could be big so you have to be connected to folks like you know how are you going to make sure that people read the blog that you put out how are you going to make sure you know so you just really ask me questions like so then I started to um, take notes and like kind of put all that together like okay I, I'm going to need a coalition of folks to work together and just really you know, it, this isn't going to be, if you really want it to be effective, it, it, it has to have like a lot of people monitoring and a lot of people involved in building it. Um, and so that's it was just, it was also it, inspiring. I'm sorry. That's sort of what it is today. I don't, you, you started with the why, but I don't think people know the what of it yet. Um, sure. Yeah. So the what is, it's a, it's a few different things. So basically we want, our ultimate goal is for all decisions that are made uh, all political decisions that are made in Sacramento to be made through a social justice lens. And, and so that happens in a few different ways, right? One is people have to know what's going on. Those who are social justice minded have to know what's going on. And so that's what we do in a, in a, in a newsletter that we publish every two weeks where we do recaps of city council or county board of supervisors meetings. And then we also um, have like action alerts that are coming up. And then we spotlight social justice folks we do cute things like a side eye, who's getting the side eye this time, you know, who's been cutting up. Um, so that's the first part is like, you know, awareness, right? People knowing. But then there's like the other level of, okay, I wanna be involved. Okay, so then easy, sign up to attend a meeting and we'll provide you the tools of how to read an agenda, you know, how to make a public comment, right? You know, what to look for on the agenda. And then you can also then share what happened with the read with our readers, you can send in a report about what happened, right? So that's one way. Um, so that's what we're doing. Uh, we're doing now, but we're also um, we just were able to get a grant, thank God. And so we're actually going to get a um, an app for social justice, where folks can have it in their hand and they're able to create a profile, pick their likes, their issues they're interested in, sign up for meetings, and just have a community. Because um, the, the idea is to make it easy. Social justice. Being involved in a social justice movement should be easy for those that want to do it and for folks to get in like where they want to fit in, right? So, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I find it very cool and very exciting, um, particularly because it not only sort of wrests power from the institutions of politicians into the hands of people, it also wrests power from legacy media into the mm -hmm. hands of people. You're empowering them to tell the story of what happens that night at a city council or a board of soups meeting or a, a school board meeting through their lens. Um, right. And it's not filtered through, you know, sort of a for-profit uh, Right. entity um, and it's crowdsourced and it's crowdsourced so i'll just add i got a phone yeah. call from a city council person let's talk about like, this yes who didn't like um who didn't like what we wrote and they were kind of asking me who who wrote it and i was like you know it's a lot of us and we get together and you know people take different areas and we put it all together but what it, everything that's written is reflected in the values of SJPC. So I'm not like throwing one person under the bus, right? Right. Because you didn't like what we wrote. So you have a number of writers. Uh, they they do write it under the byline of just SJPC, right? Mm -hmm. um, walk us through what happened with this piece. This came out in early February and it got a lot of action online. Uh, mm -hmm. In particular, I think what what caught people's eyes the most was this graphic that showed an interaction between Sacramento City Council member Katie Valenzuela and Mayor Daryl Steinberg about how the budget should be spent uh, and who should have the most say over how the money in our budget is spent. Obviously, I think um, 
a number of folks that that we're all associated with. Uh, Kula, are you a part of it too? The the people's budget. Yes, I am. Okay, and Flo is a part of it too. I know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it it sort of comes to the crux of what the people's budget is about. And basically, Katie is arguing to the mayor, the people, this is their money and they should have more say in, in it. And he's arguing back to her, well, we are elected officials and we could debate this all day, but, you know, we're going to decide this. Right. Right. And at the, uh, and another, um, the other issue was, that came out was, um, you know, I think Katie brought up some issues around possible Brown Act violations, you know, who had known what, who the mayor had talked to. And, um, and it made it made it seem like, you know, uh, Councilmember Jay Chenier, you know, wasn't some kind of a violation. And, and, and so, um, you know, but we just shared what happened at the meeting. And, and so, you know, it, it's like, I'm, we're not going to say, okay, we're not going to print this because it makes somebody looks in a bad light if that's what really happened, right? And so it's just, and but to even tell you the process, so the, the idea, the goal is for anyone who watches a meeting to send us a report of what happened. We have a, a questionnaire, it's really easy. And we even say, this is in a very conversational tone, talk like you're talking to your homie, what happened? Why is it important for social justice? What do you want people to know about it? Right, so anyone, anyone who goes to a meeting, you just, you can go on our website, you click on the meeting date, you sign up, you go to a meeting, you watch it, you know, as it happens, or even afterwards, you can say, hey, I didn't have a chance to watch it, but I want to report on it, it's recorded. You send us le something later, and then we, like, there's a group of editors and kind of go through and, and, you know, add like graphics and, you know, make it in a way that, um, that makes sense for the readers and stuff. So absolutely. Um, yeah. So anyone can. That's the whole point to have like more people have their eyes on what's happening. I yeah. love it. Just this idea of empowering a person to not not just go attend these meetings. Obviously, you do it on your computer now right now, but um, to to have your platform and to say what they saw. And, you know, these are obviously social justice minded people. And in as much as our politicians can claim up and down that they are as well, they clearly don't view it through the same lens that a lot of our friends do. Right. Right. And, and Dave, oh. it's just, and, and it's very clear. So, and the idea, so it's not just um, your, your reporting, that's one aspect of it, but we're also building um, like a database, right? So the thing is every year SJPC is gonna come out with a social justice report card. And so um, there's a person that's part of our council who's helping to kind of think through what the methodology will look like. And I have, that, that's on her to, to, you know, that she's taking the lead on it, kind of like, how do we grade folks on like, you know, housing and education and, you know, health and all of those things, but, uh, for every year for there to be a report card, you know, similar to maybe what like the uh, Sierra, uh, Sierra Club or whatever does, you know, every year to have that. And then and and then you can look at that and we might even link it to previous reports that we've done throughout the year. So you can see kind of like where this data comes from. So it's not just during an election year, but it's every year. And I want to do a big press thing around when the report card comes out so that, again, elected officials know like, hey, that report card be coming out every year in October, you know, like how did I do on that? And so it's also just another way for, for then later on for social justice minded folks who just want to know where leaders are to get that. And I envision we are able to do um, canvassing, all of that again, to be able to literally share that with people on their door, right? So I love that. You know, you... Yeah. You and Flo and, and, uh, and others, right, back when, um, are you still the president of BWAPA? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. goodness. Oh, I could not be able to. I, I had the great new president, Melanie Richardson. Oh, uh, Melanie love Richardson. Love her, yeah. yes. So thank goodness. It just, uh, she's, she's, she's taking it through like, it's going to be BWAPA 3.0. Um, yeah, love so. It. Well, mm -hmm. you Buapa and Sac Sister Circle, uh, which Flo is, is central to, um, and that's like a collection of, I believe it's like thousands of, of 10, black 10,000 now. Oh 10,000 now, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, you just keep growing. Of women in, black women in the region uh, who uh, want to effectively just make a difference and talk about the issues mm -hmm. of the day. And it's sort of a space for them to do that. 
uh, you, you, your two groups have come out with voter guides every election year. I like this because it brings it to another level. It keeps accountability going throughout the cycle of someone's politic or political right. career so that um, there's a paper trail now of did they serve the black community? Did they serve renters rights? people experiencing mm -hmm. homelessness, you know, all of these mm -hmm. things. Um, it, it, I really like that. It's, it's, it's the next level of organizing that I think this region really needs. Well, and it yeah, also and it, to it me, to like, it seems to me too, like another very, very cool part of it is that it takes something like local government, local politics that is like, can be pretty stale and pretty heady and makes it accessible um to people who may like want to get involved but may feel like you know like that's an impenetrable thing that they can't access it allows them access to that which is really important because like i don't know like i i think that a lot of the way that those meetings are like timed and designed and whatnot are meant to uh intentionally frustrate people so they don't pay attention and i think that like honestly like one of the best things that can happen for this community or any other is for the community members to like stand up and take notice of like what their uh, representatives are actually doing and saying, because if everybody's doing that, then they can't keep doing and saying the wrong things and with no consequences over and over yep. again. And yeah. so, yeah, like, I don't know the work that you are doing to make it, to make it so that, um, people who are either new to it or have a more casual relationship to it can access it in a way and can affect it in a way that's meaningful is uh, is really important. Uh -oh. Yeah, I mean, that's that's always been like my passion, just like getting people to like fit in, fit in how you can, what works for you, right? If you wanna be civically engaged for social justice. Even when I was president of BOWAPA, one of the things that I really loved that we did, I was like, We're, you're gonna do your personal political action plan. And we would do it in January. And it was like, okay, I want to, you know, go to a city council meeting, learn more about an issue, serve on a border commissioner, whatever, whatever it is, but whatever. just something that works for you and it's your personal political action plan, right? And it's just because it's just really it's a it's a form of control. I'm a I'm kind of a control freak. And so like to make it seem like I have some kind of control in my life in terms of the 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 way the decisions are being made. But then also understanding like, like my sister, I look at her as a, my oldest sister, she's all about social justice, but she's not gonna, she's not going to meetings all the time. She's not, but if I show her a report card and like, what's going on, she's gonna, she's like, yep. Okay. Hell no. You know? And so it's, it's kind of like figuring out where people are and then, you know, meeting them where they are to, to get them to, to, to um, kind of do their own thing in terms of bringing about social justice. So. Yeah. Getting where you fit in. Absolutely. So how many people um, have you sort of gathered together uh, for this? We, you, I first heard uh, in long form of, about this. Uh, you came on a, a local independent media chat um, with a bunch of uh, uh, us independent media members in the region. And uh, you had a young woman who I believe is a full-time student, but who yes. also was working uh, yeah. at a, she's a yeah, and, she's a freshman in college, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and she presented, you know, what this is all about. Who do you have a part of this? Um, what walks of life are they from? And yeah. And yeah. That's great. So yeah, the, the council is, is pretty great. Um, so we've got uh, folks uh, that are representing various social justice organizations. And so that's why the whole point about it being a council is to, to lean on the experts from other social justice organizations so that we also know like, what are we asking for? And they can also help to, you know, read what we're writing, you know, to make sure, you know, that, that um, we're building together because SJPC is also formed to help those organizations, right? So we've got, folks from Surge showing up for racial justice. We've got Sacramento Homeless Union. You know, our, if you haven't had Crystal Sanchez on here, Crystal, you gotta, uh. cause she's a, she's a baddie, right? So um, we've got uh, obviously folks from uh, Decarcerate on there. So we've got like a representative from like each of those organizations. And so we've got a representative from uh, Juice, Justice Unites, uh, individuals and communities everywhere. They're also partnering with Black Zebra. 
Um, hmm. We've got uh, folks from uh, that are. What about Sunrise? School. Oh yeah, Sunrise. Yes, we've got totally, totally folks from Sunrise were like with me from the from the beginning, right? So it's and then other folks who just like reach out. This lady, she's a, a parent in in the Thomas area, and she was like, "Hey, I want to help out," and I was like, "Sure, join the council, right?" Anytime I go and people, you know, and I always, um, one of the things I've come up with that I seem to be pretty effective is like three levels of involvement, whether you want to be at the core level, where it's you're coming to the meetings we meet every other Sunday, and then, you know, we're, we're working on the, the report and putting things together, or you just want to be like uh, a consultant coming in, you know, for specific things of expertise, like one of my good friends, she came and walked us through our values. How do we come up with our values and how do we, so she walked us through that process. And then she dipped out if you need me for something. Another friend was like, I'm gonna help you with a grant, but then I'm gonna dip it out. There was a space for everyone um, to be helpful. But at that core, the people that meet every other Sunday are representatives. We've got about 15 people that are representative from different social justice organizations within Sacramento County. Um, yeah, so we've got folks from like the Bike Coalition. There's just like lots of different folks. Mm -hmm. I've been ranting a lot lately. Uh, uh, and often to flow uh, repeatedly on this idea that uh, we are on the cusp of something and there's so much organizing coming from so many different directions um, that if all of these different fights that we all agree are just fights, you know, the, the fight for black liberation, um, uh, the fight uh, against climate change, the, the fight um, to protect our, our unhoused neighbors and the fact that their housing is a human right. Yep. If all of these groups start coalescing before elections and say, hey, <laughs> if you can stand on these, you know, four or five different principles, if you can commit to all of these things, you have this sea of people behind you. And when I see something like this, it's like, is this really happening? I mean, that's the goal. And it and it's scary. Like I'll tell you when I was like kind of, but I have to step back from like this, I, this, this white supremacy idea of individualism and like, like, no, we're all in this together, right? Like it's not, cause sometimes you get scared. Like, oh, you have, there's a vision. Like what if it doesn't materialize? And what if, you know, there's all this, like all, all of these, all of these fears, but you know, that's really it. It's it's when you were organizing and we're all coming up with the, 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 the tenants, right? Of what's important to us and we're standing behind it. Um, you know, one of my really good friends, the one who helped walk us through our values, she's a, um, an organizer with the Community Coalition of South LA. And what she said to me do, in August, when we were uh, doing the CARES Act uh, bullshit, I'm sorry, BS. Um, <laughs> she said, Hula, you know what I've noticed about Sacramento, because she lives in LA, she said, y'all have a pretty good outside game, but y'all need a stronger inside game. And she said that to me, and that's also one of the reasons why, you know, I was like, we need to start this um, this political action committee, um, which is something that had been in my mind also for, God, probably since in my 20s, but I just didn't think, you know. But she was like, you need a strong inside game. She's like, you know, in LA, we're working with people who are on the inside also, you know, um, and, and that makes stuff a little easier. Um, and so it's just, yeah. And we've got a couple people inside, right? Finally, right? <laughs> Actually, while we're on this topic, um, I was we I gotta was... let Kula finish her song, <laughs> man. <laughs> let me not hurt the audience. <laughs> I was going through the blog earlier, and you, ha you are somebody um, was writing about our our newest um, council members, uh, specifically. Um, Katie and Katie Valenzuela and my Vang. Um, and whoever was writing this thing kind of has this take about like, oh, like this is why, even though like, you know, cause obviously there's been, you know, like one of the critiques or I guess one of the things that people have, like one of the takes people have about it is there's just two of them and you need, what is it five to do anything, right? right. Um, but somebody has a counter to that, which is like, well, what they can do and my did this recently at a city council meeting is mm -hmm. to say, no, this is the right thing to do. And then it forces everybody else on the council basically to have to, if they disagree or they don't want to do that to say why. Um, 
like is there like am i am i understanding that concept right and is that like are, are there like other kind of um like strategies wrapped around that that can be used yeah. um for 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 good yeah absolutely i mean i so i don't know if you want to weigh in but i'll just like um so somebody i was talking to somebody the, the, the other day and they were asking me about um you know should we focus on, you know, city council getting more help for Katie and my, or, you know, should we focus on the, the board, you know, and obviously, you know, I want it all right. But Katie and my, they just from being there in such a short time have shifted the conversation, right? They've got people scurred. Okay, the types of questions that's being asked, the types of things that are being called into question, like, why are we doing it this way, right? That's so amazing. What we need at the county is somebody who can do that as well. And so what I responded to this person, I said, well, Natoli's about to be out. We need to make sure that we get somebody in there who is going to, uh, like, you know, again, Katie and I put a high bar, but somebody that at least is going to push and ask those questions as much as it can be in the county. And what I said was, you know, and this, and I said, you know, uh, uh, I keep saying Gary Davis. Yes, he's the one. He's running against Jacqueline Moreno. And I said, you know, he's going to be more for like what? that. For I'm sorry. For, for go ahead. Supervisor County Five, um, Don Natoli's. This seat. is Natoli's seat. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I said, if we can get someone, you know, Jacqueline's more progressive than than Gary Davis. I've known Gary for a while. Um, nothing against him. He's just not going to be up there and really try to shake things up, right? And I understand Elk Grove. I know how the politics are, but it's like let's focus on if if we can get somebody on the county who can push that dynamic even more, right? Like we can really change some things also. So it's just important of one person who can do that is smart enough and has has the tenacity enough to do it. I mean, Flo just was telling, was telling us how she was able to flip a whole freaking uh, jury pool. So, you know, yeah. you can do it. You one know? person can, yeah, can make a huge difference. Right. Right. Well, while we're on this topic, um, we have recently were talking about um, one of our favorite Sacramento friends, uh, Sheriff Scott Jones, has recently announced that he will not seek reelection uh, next term, and um, which obviously initially uh, feels like very good news because he's one of the worst human beings uh, on the planet. Never mind Sacramento County. Uh, the immediate follow-up to that celebration is oh wait but who's coming in next who's right. running is it like is there any possibility that somebody who isn't like a flaming pile uh uh like you know a dumpster fire is going to run for that position and do you like do you do you have any takes about that as, as somebody who who pays attention to these sorts of things uh, you know i i the people that I've heard come like kind of come up if it's if it's what's his, um, a protege of Sheriff Scott Jones isn't going to that doesn't excite me that's more of the same. That's that's more of the same. And then, you know, Jim Cooper, I think, has been thrown around, you know, like, it, no, it, thank it, you. It, it, you know, <laughs> you know, it, yeah. just, it, it doesn't. You know, excite me. Uh, but Flo, Go ahead, sis, Flo, because I know you got some, some stuff all day. I mean, yeah, this is your yoga buddy. I was like, I was like, no, right now there's not. Um, and, you know, and that's the unfortunate part is that whoever it is has to be somebody who's in law enforcement. So we have a really, you know, it's not as if like when we're looking for people to run for, you know, for city council or to run for a county supervisor, you don't have to have any particular qualifications. So it's literally anybody, you know, who lives in your region who's of age, right, and who'd be willing to do it. Whereas when you're talking about DA and sheriff, now you're talking about you're limited to the pool of people who are barred in the state of California as, as you know, attorneys or people who are, you know, who are law enforcement. And so, you know, the real question is, are there, is there anybody in there? I mean, you know, I don't know, would Lieutenant Samir Sood be willing to do it? I don't know. Like, I just like, I'm, I'm trying to think of some people who like, seem like they have half a brain who might be able to participate. 
Um, I only call him out by name because he is was the lieutenant I did a drive drive along with or ride along with, who actually like had the wherewithal to say, "Do we need to call in the canine unit when eight officers?" didn't <laughs> didn't stop to say could we call this person outside first and was like hey why did you yell at a person who was reporting kitty porn to us and tell us that by capturing the evidence for us that they were like you know um that they were you know in possession of kitty porn and they could be arrested like he seemed like he kind of had at least like half a brain which unfortunately is is not is a very low bar but it's also a bar that's really hard to clear at times so you know i I, I don't know, but I, I feel like we're going to have to start selecting among them as well for these roles potentially um, too, because the people who sign up are not great. Can be real quick. Uh, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this, but the, Jim Cooper has come up before as somebody who uh, is not popular with uh, the hosts of this show, uh, even though he is technically a Democrat. You know, he has a D next to his name. Can you give me just like the cliff notes on why he is such an unacceptable candidate. Cause I actually don't really know very much about him. Um, the cliff notes version would be, you ever see the movie Boys in the Hood? Yes. There's a black cop who pulls over <laughs> Trey <laughs> and Ricky at one point. And Jim Cooper has frequently been described as the black cop from Boys in the Hood. Um, he is essentially a person who is Democrat in name only. Um, and that's, and I'm saying that in terms of even for the moderate birth that the Democratic Party has, he is a struggle to even be on board with them, which should say a lot. Um, he is pro law enforcement. He was behind this whole movement that um, was Prop 20 on our last ballot uh, to be able to rescind Prop 47 and Prop 57 and criminalize people further. Um, and that's really been his big take the whole time he's been the, in the assembly. Um, he it ha was so abusive as a police officer that I know multiple people um, in multiple circles who won't even occupy space with him because of just how abusive he was when they were young people. Um, he, uh, yeah, it, it, he, you know, you have to fight for his vote on things that should be really easy to be able public to get. Public health stuff in the assembly. Public health stuff, I mean, in the assembly, like he's just, he is a thorn in our side. I, I would love, I'm glad, you know, he'll be vacating that that office because it clears the way for somebody better to be able to represent us in the assembly. Um, and I have no trust or faith at all in his vision for law enforcement, given that he is one of the notorious abusers. He also had allegations of sexual harassment. Correct. Right? Yes. I wasn't sure if they were, I wasn't sure how to yeah. handle that without libel, but um, yeah. allegations is a great way to handle that. So yes, he also has been accused of, <laughs> um, of some really untoward behavior um, and multiple people who work in the Capitol have, you know, in, in the whispers as they do um, an, take place have said, Open secret. Not that one. Yeah, very open yeah. secret. To be fair, though, that is more or less of a qualification if you're going to run for an elected position within law enforcement, right? Like you have to, <laughs> there at least have to be accusations against you right. of sexual harassment, or I don't think they consider you. Not about Chief Han. I mean, you know, he's that's that's Dave's yoga buddy. Um, mm -hmm. but I haven't heard any uh, any sexual harassment allegations against him. Again, he's I feel always like we're been a gentleman for, with me. A um, really low bar yoga. here, right? Which is like, <laughs> which is like, have you not been accused of the most, the most oh, vile God. of crimes in your pursuit of your career? Right. But I, I mean, I at least want to put that out there that I haven't heard that about Chief Han. But that's right. city versus think, county, right? Like I yes, think certainly. in the county, yeah, you gotta, you gotta have a couple of allegations or. I mean, Nap Gill, but, yeah. uh, but I just want to, I, I wanted to put a, a pin also in this. So one of the things, I've started to like my mantra this year has been like hashtag don't waste my time right but a hashtag just don't waste our time like energy like there's only so much energy right and I always like to say like focus is powerful so I think that you know if we're if we're looking at the sheriff's race you know and and we've got folks on there who are like okay it's a protege of Scott Jones or Jim Cooper or somebody like I for I'm like I'm not trying to put my energy behind that then right what I will put my energy on, let's say we have a really great candidate for DA or something, right? Like, I want to put all my energy behind that, right? Because, like, let's see, or to um, really getting the county to be more, um, more uh, uh, radical, right? And be able to then counter 
the sheriff, right? Mm -hmm. And then how do I, how do we get a county executive who is going to be a bit more radical so that the sheriff doesn't have any bars? So then like, how do we, what are those other systems that we can play in to try and limit the amount of harm, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that the sheriff can do. And so that's also just the other way that I like to start thinking about things. I think that's a really smart way to, to look at it. Um, you know, when you look at, as Flo was saying, like a sheriff's race, none of them are going to agree with us. They, they're not trying to get the job so that they can get rid of their job. To, right. They're not police abolitionists. Um, and that's a problem. It's a systemic problem for for how and why we elect who we do for that position. Same thing with the DA's race. Um, very often it's a prosecutor and prosecutors, I mean, there's a few out there. You, as we know, the uh, Prosecutors Alliance here in California has four county DAs that are like, pretty, you know, uh, at the very least progressive leaning. Um, you still got to be a lawyer, right? Uh, and so it's, it's it's an interesting and challenging uh, thing to do on a. You can't all be Kim Fox, who's like Bay. <laughs> yeah, from, and I, uh, it's Cook County. <laughs> it's an it's an egg that we're not cracking quite yet. Possibly not here in Sacramento County, but if somebody great comes up uh, for either of those, like obviously, I think they'll get people's support. Uh, hopefully, right. um, yeah. but. You know, after what we saw the district attorney Anne Marie Schubert do uh, to Stefan Clark's character a year after he died, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and all of the and more importantly, what we have seen her not do to any law enforcement, any killer any, cop, yeah, exactly, yeah, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's people are hungry for something new. She got a real, real lifesaver in during her campaign when they found uh the rapist yeah yeah the the norcal um uh killer what uh, what was his title Is it norcal rapist? the golden state killer right golden, golden state, state killer, killer. Yeah. yeah yeah um i got yeah, you shannon he goes by many names <laughs> uh and shannon will also say that it wasn't Anne marie schubert who caught him which is also true it was, it was definitely Shannon. like ancestry.com. Shannon caught him. So, Shannon caught him. Just, <laughs> folks, just, we got him. I mean, <laughs> and, Sh and Shannon, but it was ancestry.com, right? Like somebody in his family had signed up and ancestry, their, their, you know, their, all of their policies are super lax on privacy. And so law enforcement went to them and ancestry cracked the case. Like that's, that's how this works. So yeah. yeah. So See, that's why I never done that. Kula, um, you just threw me off when you said that. <laughs> or twenty three and me, it could have been. It could be either one. I don't remember which which company, but it was. A, a company yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's why I haven't done it. You know, I murdered many people. <laughs> no, I meant only ancestry dot com. I mean. <laughs> Ooh, it's gonna be one chat. of those episodes. We're gonna get another. <laughs> Well, we've got another serial killer on the show, guys. Uh -huh. Great. Oh, there we go. Con congratulations. You just got Anne-Marie Schubert elected again. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to start the free Kula movement. Okay, yeah, I so know, right? oh. <laughs> I mean, now all of our time has to go to freeing you. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about uh, how can people get involved and, and how can they find um, Social Justice Politicor and the Social Justice Political Action Committee, which is focused uh, in our region. And it sounds like uh, more towards within our county, right? Sacramento, yeah. So your first question, um, the Social Justice Politicor is if you go to socialjusticesac.org, Again, socialjusticesac.org. Basically, you go there, you hit get involved. The first thing you have is join SJPC. So if you click that button, you get to pick like your preferences in terms of those types of meetings that you are interested in and also your issue areas. And if you want us to text you, like I'm gonna be texting some people uh, on either probably early Wednesday morning, be like, hey, board of supervisors, make sure you get your comments in or, you know, um, you know, we can text you. And then, so that's one way. Then the second thing on there will say, you know, attend a government meeting. You click on that, it takes you to a calendar. You can click on uh, school board meetings, which we need more folks. We have, we, we started off not focusing on school board just because 
of all the stuff that was happening with the city and the county, but that's definitely in place. We need more reporters to attend school board meetings. And so we're we're working on, on building that. Um, but you can click on a meeting. Because the media is not covering yeah. those. And that I love yeah. that you are focusing on that. Yeah, it really has to, it, it really has to be because there's there's just so much that are are are, are babies. Um and anyways, and then um, you can also then uh, share a report and share what you learned. So those are kind of like just three easy ways. Um, but again, always looking for folks to also be a part of the, the, the council and come and, you know, share your expertise, help us with this report card that we're trying to figure out if you're good at like, um, I don't know, data, putting together some kind of metrics, you know, help, help us out. Um, for the PAC, so I just want to be clear there, you know, there, there are two separate entities. Uh, so the political action committee very um, is different in that it, it's raising money specifically. It's raising money to fund candidates. The social justice political court is sharing information about what's going on at these government meetings and how elected like, officials are voting and things mm -hmm. like that. The PAC is specifically um, saying we're raising money for social justice minded candidates in Sacramento County. And now it might be, you know, later on, maybe, you know, folks try to run for higher office from Sac County, but I really, there's, I'm really local. I'm very hyper local. Um, and, and, you know, to really, I saw that there's like a, a deficit in terms of funding for candidates who are about um, black liberation, who are really about that social justice life. And, um, you know, elected officials can kind of just act any kind of way to us. They can be rude, frankly, and they have been. They've been to me. They've been to Flo. Um, just very dismissive. And I'm like, you know what? We need to build power in that other way, too, you know, where it's like we're funding people. So that's still getting, that's getting started. We're, that website, everything is still up. It's just, we're super new with that. Um, and so... Uh, you know, I don't know if you all have links. We can put the links if folks want to start donating, though, to the to the pack. Um, you can set up a recurring donation, and so I can we can drop. Hopefully, you can share that on the. Okay, yeah, we can do the that. Podcast the comes out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's one way. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, I love everything about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm loving it. Um, you know, I just want to say that I, I think what we progressives have talked about for a while is something that's finally coming to the forefront of the minds of the mods is mm -hmm. that we are on different teams and we have different values and the mods are realizing that finally and circling the wagons but i think if we keep fighting and we keep pushing it's too late like we there's so much we can do. And this could be my Dory coming out, right? Oh, but you are Dory. Oh, I totally you. am. Uh, Super balance with Skylar. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, I mean, you gotta like, but my thing is like, you just can't take a loss too hard. It's like, you're gonna right. lose. You're not gonna win every mm -hmm. political fight. Like if you did, right. this would be really easy. Uh, right. And so like, yeah, it, but like, I feel like something special is happening and, um, when I talk with someone like you, Kula, uh, it it really drives it home to me um, that that we can make real change and that uh, you know the the good guys can win, the goodies can win, and yeah. we already have two goodies who won on the city council this last year. They kept and one people one people thought Katie. They were like, "What talk show? What?" And Katie was like, yeah, I'll show you, right? Ab absolutely. I, I think that um, our mind really, really can limit us. And, 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 and again, because we've all built in this system of white supremacy. And so, you know, there's things that are our norms that we think we're so attached to. But then once we say, hey, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. Um, you know, again, I'm just uh, like I thinking about, you know, again, Black Lives Matter, like folks, you know, were like, what the heck is this? And, you know, it, it really kind of put off by it. And now, like every freaking company is over here trying to talk about it and whatever. But mm -hmm. right. um, just just even the the I I really uh, appreciate the organizers who and the thought leaders who kind of keep pushing even me to uh, 
to think that maybe it doesn't have to be that way. You know, we just because we've structured things this way doesn't mean that it has to be. Um, and it's it, it can be scary. And I want to kind of name that because for me it is because you think, OK, some folks, what is it going to be? I don't know. Um, but I think we really have to just say, hey, it, we, we created this world and we can take it down and we created the way that we want it to. Yes. Right. There's mm -hmm. th th that's what it is. It's, it's all we have created it and we've created this system. Right. Or bought into it anyways. We didn't create it, but bought into it, um, whether whether we, we uh, like it or not. So we have to kind of untrain ourselves from that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Um, Oh, go ahead, Dave. Oh, I was just going to say, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. This is, I, I, I just think you're a very special person and I'm so excited for the work you're doing. And I think that, um, I think we'll be hearing a lot more from you and and from this organizing that that's happening on your end. So so thanks again for coming on. Um, oh, that was so nice. Thank you for having me. We so love fun. you, Kula. Love you too. I was gonna kind of riff on this, or I guess uh, continue on with this idea of uh, buying into a perfect system. Um, <clears throat> if uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess so. To like kind of uh, see. Uh oh, am I missing something? Okay. Uh, what <laughs> So basically, you know, I used to be a guy who would go to a bar and spend five bucks on a beer, right? But uh, but since uh, COVID, you know, uh, that's kind of been taken off the table with me. And so now I have kind of this extra five bucks a month just kind of sitting around burning a hole in my pocket. And so I was going to ask you guys if, you know, if you knew of any perfect systems that could stand, uh, you know, my, my $5 beer money that I'm no longer using and, uh, like, where could I go to read more about this? And I don't know, you, you, you get what I'm saying, Dave, can you, can you help me out with this? I can. Yes. And, and I'm really glad you asked me. Cause I think I, I think I do have the answer to that question. First of all, you know, we, we don't only have one beer over the course of a month. Uh, so if you are a person who ends up having three, uh, <laughs> you can go as low as $10 a month to the Social Justice Political oh, Action man. Committee. Uh, and then if you've got another five left over, uh, you can you can go to patreon.com slash Voices River City and help su support Voices River City in the work that we're doing. Um, if you do that $5 to Voices, that doubles, doubles the number of episodes that you get on the Voices podcast. That's like a, a basically a buck an episode that you're right. getting now. Actually. Think about how much longer you can spend listening to four extra episodes of Voices a month than it would take you to drink one beer. Yeah. Hey, I just, I became a member. You know what I'm saying? You did. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Uh, cool. Folks, we love to see it. An absolute real one. We have to send her a t-shirt and a mug, actually, uh, which is extremely exciting. Um, so thank you for that. Send me my stuff. Yes. <laughs> you'll get it. Oh, my God. Yeah, next um, time you're on the show, you'll have the Voices <laughs> mug to drink your tea out of. <laughs> oh, <Perfect. laughs> um, you can, if you want a koozie, too. Um, oh, oh, you know, friend of a uh, friend of the show, uh, Veronica pointed out to me recently that that if you don't like White Claws, uh, first of all, you know, figure your life out. Uh, but second of all, <laughs> uh, apparently a bottle of Damn. beer fits uh, very snugly into the White Claw koozie as well. So that is that, lovely to know. Because I don't yeah. drink. You don't drink what? Oh, with my internet freezing. Yeah, you froze briefly. Did I don't you drink say you beer didn't... from a can. Uh, I was going to say, I thought you were going to say you didn't drink White Claw, and I was going to have to wrap the episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right. it's uh... You can drink it from a bottle. I Sorry, think, my internet. I think, the bo I think the bottom of like a like a, a bottle of beer, like a glass bottle, will also fit in the koozie. You can, yeah, no, that's what that's what uh, that's what Veronica was telling. I will also provide you yeah. a white claw. Yeah, I was saying can. it's not the same to drink a beer from a can. It's just not the same for me. Mm. I have to drink it from a bottle. I'm sorry. I hear you. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
uh we're getting close on time so i gotta rush this now uh so uh, we have a store uh voicesrivercity.com slash shop you can get the koozie you can get the mug you can get some stickers you can get some beautiful little t-shirts uh we also are on social uh facebook voices river city twitter and instagram at voices river city i already mentioned the patreon there are other things happening on our site we do the sack follows the money project which shows you which bastards are giving money to which bastards in politics that helps you decide who you shouldn't be supporting in politics we also have now started up on our community essays and op-eds because somebody is not publishing them as the way they should be. Um, so look forward to more of that coming from Voices River City. And uh, once again, thank you for everyone who supports us. I am on Twitter at Unokempo, Y-O-U-K-N-O-W-K-E-M-P-A. You can find me at guillotine for you. That's guillotine, the number four, Y-O-U. And you can find Shannon at Shan N D Stevens. And you can find me at Flo Jean, F L O J A U N E. And Kula. Kula. I think I'm on. Am I on Twitter? I am on Twitter at Kula Koenig. You sound like a hell of a follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you love Twitter. <laughs> oh, am I on Twitter? Oh, yeah, I, I am. am. <laughs> you know, on Facebook, y'all. I just be on Facebook, you know. <laughs> My niece is trying to teach me TikTok, all the things. So. Yeah, I don't know, though. I feel like if I go to Facebook and type in Kula Koenig, I'm probably going to get so many things. I'll never be able to find you, I don't think. And there's using the there's so many. Room. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that is the show uh, for today. Thank you so much for listening. Kula, thank you so much again for coming thank on. You. It was a delight to have me. you on. Yes. Um, thank you all. Uh, to all of our listeners, um, it is important for us that you know and appreciate that we love each and every one of you very much. And uh, until we see you next, we want you to stay safe. Stay sane. Stay healthy. And stay the fuck away from me. 